Hello everybody and welcome to Joe's Barbecue House. Let me tell you, this cook here has been phenomenal. So far, everybody has enjoyed all their barbecue. I've been up for nearly 28 hours straight. Only because towards the end of this cook, a lot, a lot of people started showing up and uh, it was a good time. We had a really good time. I had to cut it at about the hour and I want to say 10 minute mark because I wasn't able to get the ribs filmed, which is okay. You know, they turned out great. Um, I do want to apologize for that. This video is very lengthy. If you could watch this whole video, you hopefully you'll learn something. I don't expect everybody to watch every second of it, but you know, some of you guys that are hardcore barbecues that like cooking a lot of food at one time or want to learn how to take orders or whatnot, I'm here for you. I'm here to help you with that. Um, I'm kind of new to it all, but as far as cooking, oh, I got this. But as far as taking orders is something different. Like I said in the video, you'll see that I want to take this full time when I retire from my current job. All right, guys, please enjoy the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on this. And uh, let's get right to the video. Hello everybody and welcome to Joe's Barbecue House. Today is a pretty large cook for me. I have about 80 pounds of brisket right here. I'm going to get started. It is right now 1230 in the morning. I have approximately 60 pounds or so of candy bites I got to do today and also about 12, 13 slabs of ribs. I took individual orders. I couldn't have been more happier than those customers that supports what I do and trusts me on everything that I do. So let's go ahead and get these briskets trimmed and ready for the smoker. All right, everybody, a good little trick here. Get you some wet paper towels for your cutting board. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. This will prevent your cutting board from sliding on surfaces like this. I don't remember where I learned this, but man, I'll tell you what, it works fantastic. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you real quick how I trim one of the briskets, and then I'll do maybe a time lapse on the rest of them so you guys can see what it's like to do a large cook. So I'm just gonna trim just very little, not a whole lot. I'm gonna get this deckle fat out of here. And these briskets all came from Costco. I get their prime cuts only when I do my orders. I'm also trying to be quiet here because the family's sleeping. I just woke up. I'm not going to go too crazy in trimming the fat. You do want to get a lot of it off so your seasoning will stick to it. Looks good. Also, guys, make sure you rinse your meat off with cold water. Just in case there's any shavings left behind, you do not want that. Too bad. Like I said, I'm not going to trim off a whole lot. Looks good. You guys can see that the grain is running this way here on the flat part. The point runs in a different direction. Go 
go ahead and square this off. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and continue to trim all this meat and uh, get them seasoned up and ready to go for the smoker. All right, right now it's currently one o'clock in the morning. So as you can see, it took me about a half an hour to get to this point here. That's okay. I wanna have this cook done, I'm hopefully around 2.33 o'clock this afternoon. That's when I have it scheduled for. After, if, you guys, if you guys haven't seen my current video, you'll see that I use the super clean products to clean all my stainless and wheels and tires and all that good stuff. Fantastic product. Uh, other than that, this is the cook I was telling you about in the video, uh, the large cook that I'll be doing today. And I'm gonna try to have this done between 2.30 and 3 o'clock this afternoon. Like I said, I'm gonna put the ribs on. I'm gonna say around like 10 o'clock. Then we'll put uh, the candy bites on. I don't know, maybe around like nine or so. We'll see. We'll see how this all plans out. <clears throat> hey, comment below in the comment section if you do cooks like this and you take on massive amounts of meat. I, I love doing it. That's why I invested so much into my mobile smoker. Because One day when I retire, I want to take this to the top. Of course, I got seven years to go, though. There's a lot of brisket trimming videos out there that are really good and educational. I'm just doing what works for me, and that's just trimming off a lot of the heavier fats that won't render down. You know, you don't even have to do this. I know YouTubers that uh, just throw the brisket right on and then they trim it afterwards. I like to get some of it off anyway because I like my seasonings to penetrate to the meat and not over the big fat cat, which is fine. Some people like fat, some people don't. In our area, they like it trimmed like this. If you're curious, I'm in the Northwest Indiana area. I don't advertise. I just, uh, every once in a while, if I get time, I will uh, see if people are interested in putting in an order. If you haven't followed me on my Facebook group, it's Joe's Barbecue House. That's Joe's BBQ House. <clears throat> and that's uh, my Facebook group. It's pretty thin. It's probably going to end up burning. Square that off a little bit.
The smoker should be getting pretty close to temp. Might have another by the time I get these briskets seasoned up and should be ready to rock and roll. Golly, this one's got a good chunk of fat on it. Jeez. You don't want to take all the fat off. You want to at least at least a quarter inch of fat you want to keep on there to help protect it. I mean, I've done it where I've trimmed all the fat off, the whole fat cap and everything, and still turned out fantastic. All right. If you guys have a big mobile smokers, or pretty much any kind of smoker out there, it takes a little bit to heat up. You know, it depends on your weather and all that. Right now we're looking at about 70 degrees. It's in uh, the beginning of November, first week of November, I should say, going into the second. And uh, shoot, we're in 70 degree weather like we did yesterday. There we go. Now you don't have to throw this fat away. You could keep this for whatever. I'm just gonna throw it away. I have no use for it right now. This is the cut of meat that we got from our butcher over at Z4 Cattle Company. And uh, I've ordered a half a cow from him. Absolutely love his meats. Golly, that's his uh, good quality stuff over there. Z4 Cattle, thank you. Um, this was part of the half cow that I bought from them. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to kind of compare, I mean, it's a little bit smaller. And what I like about this, there is no trimming at all. And I like how pretty much even it is here. See how these come down to a thin point? That's all they had available. I try to find them when they're more like straight across. Maybe a small hump up here is fine. But like, as you can see, I like them to be flat. Uh, this one here is every bit of that. It's pretty much all level across. No trimming. Makes my job easier. Now this brisket here, pretty small. Uh, it was from my uh, brother-in-law's cow that he had gotten. No trimming at all. There's actually like no fat on it. It is actually the world's smallest brisket I've ever seen. Um... And it almost looks like it's just a flat. Maybe that was a point. You know, I really can't tell, guys. I don't see any. Hmm. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a brisket or not. Maybe it is. That's sure is small. Let me check the packaging again. Hopefully he gave me the right one. Yeah, it says beef brisket. So, uh, yeah. We'll just kind of pretty it up a little bit and we'll square it off. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there is a little bit of the point right there. I mean, it's just, it's, it's really small, but it is a brisket, guys. <laughs> it's okay, buddy. I'm not knocking you down there, guy. Buddy's my brother-in-law. I'll tell family if they got meat in their freezer and I got this smoker firing up, they're more than welcome to bring it along. All right, guys. Now it's time to season. Very simple. Simple, simple. All right, if you guys want some great taste in barbecue and don't want to use a whole lot of seasonings, and you really don't, I like, I'm going to go light. That's how I normally do in my cooks. 
And all this is, is SPG, 50-50-50, salt, coarse, or it's kosher salt, coarse ground pepper, and granulated garlic. And that's all you need, guys. You don't need to go crazy. Now, I do like to use my Uncle Steve's shake, but I don't have enough for this cook. But usually I use Uncle Steve's shake for more family, but he did send a bunch of rubs to do my uh, kid's graduation party, which was phenomenal. Thank you, Steve, for that. Um, and, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start getting these babies seasoned up and getting them on the smoker. Time is running out. So all you want to do is grab some, just throw that stuff on there. Don't go heavy guys. You can go heavy, but I'm going to, I want some of that smoke flavor to get into the, into the meat. That's perfect right there. That's all you really need. Yeah, if you if you just like load it down with rubs and powders and all that, it's just I don't feel that the smoke flavor could get in there as well, especially for those of you guys that run pellet smokers. Um, Oh, guys, th these are going on my um, rotisserie side of my smoker. I love that rotisserie thing. It's not really a rotisserie because it doesn't spin the meat this way, like a normal rotisserie, like on a Weber kettle. It more or less spins it, it's on a carousel that kind of rolls like that. Big difference. All right, looking good, guys. Looking good. Okay, does that merge? All right, that's as simple as that. Salt, pepper, garlic, bam, now to the smoker. It is now 1.15 in the morning, and uh, that's about right. We're gonna get them things on there, and we shall return. So I'll go ahead and see you guys outside. All right, one thing I do like to do is uh, put aluminum foil down on my fender just to keep it clean. It's, and I'm always sitting there wiping against it when I open the doors, and. Like I'm checking on meat or something like that. I just hate the spills on there. So I'm just gonna throw some aluminum foil in there real quick. All right, as you guys can see, as my pit, as my, uh, pit temps climb, we're averaging around 250 in here. Yeah, about 250. Once everything evens out, give it about another 20 minutes and she'll be right on the money. 250 across the board. I can make some adjustments to my stacks if needed. I'll open this one just a hair. Okay, at this adjustment, this thing will run a perfect 250 degrees. Show you guys the inside. Show you guys to see that. I'm going to start getting the briskets and loading them up. I'll be back. If you guys are curious, I do run my fat cap down in my smoker. I'm not that's how I've been doing. I do my pork butts. I do every cut of meat on this thing that way, and they turn out just fine. Look at that. I can't turn this off. I can't close that. Okay. 
Let me know if it's right here. Okay, let's do that. Hey, what's up there? Gonna give you guys a little update. We are now, we're almost five hours in. If you guys could read that. Yeah, we're almost five hours in. And uh, I'd like to show you what the temps are. As you can see up on the top that we're burning very clean smoke. Gonna go ahead and get these doors open for you. Or at least one door. What I like about the two separate doors here is that the heat will stay pretty much instead of having to open up one door and then the other door let all your heat out. But for video purposes, I'm gonna leave this door open and get a temp and show you guys what it looks like. All right, I'm gonna use my Inkbird instant thermometer. It's been my favorite one since I bought it. I'm gonna do a review on this thing. Right now we're sitting at about 165, 167, 164, 165-ish. They're all pr pretty much running about the same temp. I'm keeping consistent temps of 250 degrees. 165, 167. It's looking good, guys. I'm not sure I'm going to wrap. They have some great color. They're staying nice and moist. And, uh, yeah, we'll see. I think they look pretty good. And like I said, I don't think I'm going to wrap these. But if they get too dark, I will wrap them. And as you guys can see here, I opened that door. And obviously the temps drop. But if you look over on the other side, if you guys can see that, staying consistent at 250 degrees both needles only a matter of time I guarantee you these will catch up right away all right everybody I know it's a little bit early we are about six hours into this cook I went ahead and lit the other side the rotisserie on the other side as you saw earlier this morning uh, this is my I, I call it my manual side because it just has the slide out racks here okay and uh, on this side I'm going to do the candy bites and the ribs. I still have room on the other side for other briskets uh, or whatever I decide to add to it if I run out of room, which I highly doubt. Other than that, uh, I did add the two other smaller briskets, the one I got from Z4 Cattle Co Company and the um, my brother-in-law's brisket that he got from his cow. Uh, those I just put in because they were just small. So other than that, stay tuned and the reason I fired this thing up early is because uh, I want to clean out the racks. I'm going to show you how I steam clean all these racks, but I got to get it built up to about 375 degrees. And I'll show you how I uh, clean my racks before I put food on them. All right, this is the other side of the smoker. So I'm going to show you that I got her lit up. It's a nice fire. Just going to wait for them embers to uh, start compiling there at the bottom of that grate. I'm going to go ahead and shut that door and wait for her to come up the temp. All right. For those of you that are curious, I want to show you on the rotisserie side where I got the briskets in, just to show you how little, what little fire you need to keep 250 degrees. I had those stacked as you saw when I fired it up this morning. I already had added about, you know, like I said, we're about what, six and a half hours in now. And I already had added probably nine splits, uh, smaller splits to this. I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple more. Just some small ones, nothing big. Just like that, that's all you need. I do that about maybe once every hour. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with this smoker, the, the fire boxes are made of half inch steel, so it's nice and thick. 
And everything else you see, any other metal you see on here is made out of quarter inch. Even the uh, fenders here are made of quarter inch steel. And uh, of course you saw the stainless steel over the top of them. But, uh, but yeah, she's heavy duty, man. And what's nice about the warming, here, let me get you a close up. All right guys, so what's nice about the warming boxes here is when I, as, warm, as warmers I should say, we're at about 150 degrees even temps on each side. I can control, if I open this up, I could bring the heat down to 143, uh, you know, the top vents up here. Uh, I just normally just leave them closed unless I want to put food in there. Another great thing about them is that I can remove these racks here and then I got this carousel. If you guys can see that carousel there, I can hang meat from there and build a fire below. My fabricator, my fabricator, Dean, he's the mastermind behind this thing. And uh, he built me this charcoal rack here. It's removable. And uh, I have a, a damper that I could shut down to this, build a charcoal fire in here. And again, I could hang the meat from here or whatever I like to do. You could grill right off the top and you got your indirect zones up on, you know, if you, the, the higher you go on your grates. Uh, and, um, but I'm gonna have him build me this same charcoal rack and ash pan that's right here. I'm gonna have it, uh, I'm gonna have him in, uh, build me one for this side or for that side. So yeah, you could grill. It's a meat hanging mod. I mean, even for doing sausages or whatever, it's a warming box. It's like an all-in-one type thing. And there's two of them. And there's a lot of room to cook in. Those racks are pretty deep in there. Uh, I've grilled out of this thing about four times already. And I absolutely love it. It's great if I have it out and then people come like an after party or when everybody leaves and everybody wants burgers, steaks, hot dogs. I just throw them in the back of these. Then that way I don't have to fire up the whole pit to uh, please everybody. I can save on wood, all that good stuff. There's one person I do though that knows about heavy metal and that's Ken over at Heavy Metal Barbecue. Go check out his channel. I'll put the link above and in the description area. He's got some really good videos. He does a lot of mods to kettle grills and all kinds. He has a, a smoker as well, you know, a heavy duty smoker, which is uh, awesome. I love it. It's uh, an offset. And, uh, but yeah, you wanna know about heavy metal? Go see Ken. All right, everybody, I wanna show you how I steam clean my grates before I put meat on them. Of course, I do this after the cook too. When I pull the meat off, I do the same thing. We got our temps up to about 300 degrees, and all I'm gonna do is spray them with water. That's it guys, they are steam clean. I'm gonna shut the lid, let it get up to about another 300, about 300 degrees or so. Uh, and I'll hit it one more time. 
I'll get it up to about 300 degrees. It'll dry it out with the quickness and I'll be ready to throw some meat on here. Stay tuned because we're gonna go back in the kitchen and get those candy bites prepped. All right, we're back in the kitchen and what you're looking at here is 60 pounds of pork belly, which I'm gonna turn into candy bites. Okay, as you see, we got 60 pounds of uh, pork belly that we're gonna turn into candy bites. Remember guys, rinse all your meat with cold water. Sharpen your knives. My hands are clean. I did wash them with this um, antibacterial hand wash soap. I'm gonna get some gloves on before I start cutting and seasoning. Just wanna show you guys this real quick. Okay. I'm gonna be using this cheap $20 Victoria Knox. I believe they call it a bread knife. I use it for my briskets. I, don't, I couldn't tell you how many briskets, how many pork bellies that I've sliced with this. and. Uh, Absolutely perfect for only 20 bucks. I mean, you get them on Amazon. If I think about it, I'll put the links in the description for you. Um, but pork belly, when I do pork belly, I make sure that any of the silver skin you see here, you want to cut that off. Uh, I normally don't touch the backside. That fat cap will help protect the, the meat. And uh, man, when that fat renders, and if you've never had candy bites, you're going to be blown out of your mind. These things are fantastic. So basically, um, give me a second. I'm going to put on some gloves and uh, let's start. I'll show you one of these and maybe I'll do a time lapse on the rest of them like I did with the brisket and show you guys how I do all this. All right. I even use this knife to uh, trim off the silver skin. Just make sure you uh, sharpen it. And of course, don't cut yourself. Now what I'll do is I'll square off the ends here. Okay. Now what you want is about, say inch, inch and a half squares. I've done them in all different sizes. I find out that about an inch, inch and a half works great for these. So you just go ahead and just start cutting your slices out. And then one of my earlier videos, you guys probably saw me where I would score it like this and then go ahead and cut it. But once you get used to it, cuts like butter. Very important to have a sharp knife. Also, for those that don't know, this is where your bacon comes from. They uh, brine it, they smoke it, and uh, that's, how, that's where you get your bacon from. And that's where we're getting our candy bites from. Doesn't taste like bacon, but they do taste phenomenal. And when you guys are picking out your belly, be sure to find one or find them. I get, like I said, I get all my meat from Costco. Um, and you want to get them to where they're flat across. Try to stay away from the ones, kind of like a brisket, how you want to keep it, you know, about the same all the way across. It might hump out with the, the flat or the point. Uh, with these, you want to try to get them as square as possible because that's how your bites, when they form, you're going to keep the same, um, looking bites all the way across. Some of them you'll notice they get real fatty. Those won't make for the greatest bites. So I cut that end off. Actually, this whole piece here would not make for good candy bites. Some of you guys, you can save this fat. Sometimes I'll save it for when I'm cooking out on my Blackstone. 
I'll just throw this fat right on the top and just use my tongs and go around and get that baby greased up. Okay, so then what you want to do, I'll slide this on down. I may keep some of this fat, I don't know yet. Okay, so what you want to do is just come over here. I usually grab two at a time. Just start cutting your bites. And this is about what you want, want them to look like. Very similar to that. They're time consuming, but they're worth it in the end. And there you go. One whole pork belly, 10 pounds of it. Might have took maybe a quarter pound of that off from um, trimming off the sides or whatever, but a lot of those were the fatty ends and you don't want that. You want a good consistency between fat and meat, considering a pork belly is 50% fat. But when they're done, they are nice and tender, really good. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these, and I'm going to use my food grade tub right there, and I'm just going to throw all the bites in there. And how I determine the orders is you get about 60 of these bites per belly, depending. You get 50, 60, depending on how much you have to trim and how much is wasted due to fat. And uh, like on a half an order, it's anywhere from 25 to 30 bites. So we just count them out as I uh, put them in the order. So I'll keep all these together and then everybody's happy. Okay, I went out, I washed my uh, food grade tub. I'm gonna go ahead, do a time lapse here. I'm gonna speed up this video and I'm just gonna season it with my salt, pepper, and garlic, just like you saw me do the briskets. Same thing. Just dump these in here. I believe I could fit three bellies in here. If, I'm not, if I remember correctly. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing going. All right guys, perfect example. You see all that fat there on the bottom? You just got that little top layer of meat. Unfortunately, you gotta discard those. It's always gonna be a straight fat. All right guys, now I'm gonna show you how to season these. Very simple. 
Grab your SPG. Really? Go ahead and give them a good coating. All right. Once you get them evenly coated, get some salt, pepper, and garlic on these. I'm going to go ahead and um, get the other three bellies done, and we'll cut you back at the smoker. Here you guys can see what they look like. All right. See you guys in a little bit. Okay, I'm going to show you how I load these up. Just going to grab them by the, the handfuls and just start stacking them on. Normally, if I'm doing this on a Weber kettle or I got a smaller order, I usually stack them really nice and neat on the uh, cooling racks. Makes it a little bit easier to handle, but this has worked just fine. I've done it before like this and had absolutely no problems. And yes, I was able to fit all six uh, bellies inside this tub. I just mixed them separate on the cutting board after I cut them. And I did re-sanitize the, uh, the grates here. Just going to kind of keep them spaced out here. Now they will shrink down and I still have about, I don't know, I'd say three to four inches in the back of this, but it's easier to, uh, cause they, once they start cooking, they want to roll a little bit. So you don't want them falling off behind your smoker. So, uh, let's go ahead and get these ready. All right, looks like we got about, I don't know, a couple of bellies, maybe a belly and a half on here. Get a few more on here. As long as you got a little gap in between them, you're fine. You don't want them button up to each other. That way the smoke flavor could get in between there and then uh, you'll be good to go. Because they'll, they'll end up shrinking, so you can put them fairly close together, just not touching. Okay, next rack. See why aluminum foil comes in handy? So, I, so any droppings just falls on that. If I want to clean it, replace it with new foil to make it look better when people come over, I could do so. Now later on when you guys see this stuff cooking, when it, or as it's smoking and everything, it'll, uh, it's going to look like smoke coming out the stacks, but it's not. It's going to be steam from hitting them uh, tuning plates at the bottom. And let me tell you, it's, it smokes up pretty good. Or I should say steams up pretty good. So don't mistake in steam for dirty smoke, because I won't run dirty smoke in my pits. Of course, naturally on fire up, you want to open your doors, open all your exhaust vents, and let it all drain away. All right, I do believe I could fit. I do believe I could fit the rest on one more rack. All 
We're about seven hours into this cook, just to let you know, maybe seven hours and 15 minutes. So you got to check the clock. But as you can see, uh, everything's coming along just fine. I'm going to let these roll at about 250 for maybe two and a half hours. It all depends on the color on them before I go and uh, put them in uh, large foil pans. I had a YouTuber, his name is Dash. I'll throw his uh, YouTube channel up in the card. And uh, if I think about it, I'll put it in the description area too. He uh, recommended they have my builder weld me a, a bottom support and stoppers in the back. No, he just said to put the stopper so when I pull it out, it'll stop. I kind of like that I could pull it all the way out, but because um, it seems to be doing just fine. But next time uh, when I get some other add ons put on this uh, smoker, I am definitely going to have um, a center support underneath here running across the bottom. Just give it more, you know, the, uh, to make it more rigid, I should say. All right. So I'll get you guys a close up here in a minute. Okay. There's rack one. This will be the third rack. There's rack two. And rack three. All right, keep in mind, I don't normally leave the doors open this long, but this is for video purposes. Let me show you guys how the racks go. They go about right there. I mean, that's, you can fit a lot of food on these things. Now, if I wanted to do just briskets on here, I'd have to remove at least um, this bottom one here and possibly this top one, but you can still fit, I would say, Maybe three small briskets on here, or two large ones on one rack. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start prepping the ribs. Here you're looking at 12 slabs of baby backs. These came from Costco, of course. The best thing about getting them at Costco is they already come with the membrane removed. Also, you're looking at about nine pounds per package. There's three slabs per cryovac, uh, which gives you about 36 something pounds. So 36 pounds of baby back ribs. Let's go ahead and get them out of the package, rinsed off, get some SPG on there and get them on the smoker. If you guys can see that, but the membrane's already pulled off. Now, if you buy their St. Louis cut ribs, you have to peel those off yourself. But not the loin backs. If you guys notice, I do not use any binders on my ribs. Reason being is um, when you rinse off with the cold water, that is your binder. I know everybody's got their way of doing ribs. You don't have to do it the way I do it, but whatever works for you, stick with it. All right guys, so all I'm gonna do here, just check them. I do like to take some of the silver skin off here, some of this fat. You don't have to do this. This is how I do it. Like any silver skin you may see, you're going to want to get that off. I don't do a whole lot of trimming on the ribs. They're pretty lean. Any pieces like this that you see flapping off there, I'll just cut that out. 
You see like stuff like that's just waste. It'll just end up burning anyway. Now if I was cooking these at home, I'd probably leave them on there. But for my customers, I uh, trim that off. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these seasoned. Again, salt, pepper, garlic. Changed my glove. Or actually, I'll just pull this one off. Okay, salt, pepper, garlic. Just like that. You don't need a whole lot. But this good coating will do. All right, there you have it, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and set these aside. I'm gonna get these other ones. Uh, out of the package, rinsed, and get these uh, get those seasoned, and they're gonna go right on the right on the uh, grill or right on the smoker. Be right back. Very good. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the doors. Let this baby ride at 250 and go from there. All right, everybody, welcome back. So we are now about eight and a half hours into this cook and we have one or two of the briskets that's getting ready, to, we're gonna get ready to pull. I'm gonna go ahead and get a temp on it right now. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to a good buddy of mine. His name is Mark Zazetti, also known as Z-Man. The great guy. Mark, say hello to the people. How you doing, folks? That's right. Glad to be here helping Joe today. That's right, he come over about an hour ago and said, he put on his apron, he said, I'm ready to go. So uh, that's awesome. We're gonna go ahead and uh, check these. I don't think you guys will be able to see this, but this one's running at about 190 degrees, 193. But it's going in really nice. Yeah, so about 190 on that one. Let's check this one. Oh, look at that, went in like butter. 203, 206, 201. Let's go to the flat. About two, almost 200. Oh yeah. We're gonna pull that one there. Keep an eye on that one, Mark, would you please? Okay. We'll always retest it. This one here has about another, I'd say, half hour to go. But I don't know if you guys can see that, how jiggly it is. Oh yeah, that's what you wanna see. And I believe this one here, see we're about 195, almost 200. Okay, well we got one that we're gonna definitely pull for now. And we're going to show you how we do that. Extremely tender. Exactly. So which one was it? This one? Yeah. Let's see, get it over here. 200. Oh, let me see this one here. Oh, here we go. I think it was this one. That's All right, cool. hit the, we'll hit the off switch here. Hit the right one. Here we go. All right, one second. I'm going to go ahead and shut this door. Go ahead and lay out the aluminum foil. All right, Mark, speed to hold that. 
a lot of the professionals will say to leave the shiny side for your meat. Right. For some reason, they claim that the, they claim uh, the light from your, if you have any kind of light coming off of your wood, like your, from your fuel supply, right. it'll shine off of it and it creates more heat in aluminum foil, which I don't understand, but I guess. We're gonna do this three times. Today, folks. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it's nice to have a helping hand. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and grab that brisket. Yeah, I'm getting it. I need my glasses. <laughs> All right. There we go. Got my pizza spatula. We're going to lay that brisket right like that. And look at that color. It's amazing. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and shut this. Let's go ahead and kick that back on. So what you want to do, guys, is let this sit out for 10 minutes, because if you go and wrap it tightly, it's just going to continue to cook. And uh, so we'll let this sit out for 10 minutes. I'll put some brown sugar and honey on here and just wrap it up and let it sit for a couple hours, and I'll call the customer to come pick it up. Stay tuned. That looks amazing. Yeah, man, I'm telling you. Super nice. Nice bark. Yeah. And this, I did not wrap this during the cook or anything. So, uh, yeah, it's uh So it didn't stall on you? No. I, uh, when people run like 225, 225 degrees, they'll run into that stall every time. Right. With me, I run 250 and up, sometimes 275. Right. And, uh, but right, this cook here was 250, and I just let it, uh, uh, I never run into a stall at them temperatures, so. But being that it's breezy out, it's about 70 degrees, and because of the wind, I'm going to let this thing sit for probably five minutes, you know, let it steam off a little bit, so, all right. All right, well, we let this sit for five minutes, so we're going to go ahead and show you what I do. I'm just going to take a little bit of honey. good enough there I'm gonna take some brown sugar here and this is light brown sugar it's gonna drizzle that over the top that'll all melt in there Now what we're going to do is go ahead and cover this up. You want to wrap it tight. Okay, then what I do, hold on one second. See if you can hold that, make sure it don't blow away. Thank you, sir. Okay, now what we're gonna do is with my orders, I take two large foil pans, 
put them together. That way, if they got cernos or warmers or whatnot, they could put a little bit of water in this pan, put this one over the top so it does the candles don't burn the bottom. They want to keep it warm. I don't really care for them kind of burners. I like the electric ones because you can monitor how hot they are. So I'm just going to set this inside of here. Then I'm going to put two pieces of heavy duty aluminum foil over top of this and it's going to go right into my Cambro. I'm going to call up the next available customer, come pick up their brisket, and I'm sure they're going to enjoy. So let's go ahead and get this wrapped up and I'll go make some phone calls. Oh, yes, sir. They will be. You're exactly right. Yes, sir. I usually let them rest for about uh, two hours when I like to go slice. But, uh, I mean, yeah, but they'll hold forever. All right. I'm gonna go put this in the Cambro. Meantime, we got about a half an hour or so, maybe possibly an hour for the other briskets to get up to temp. Uh, I'm also gonna wrap them two smaller ones right now uh, that I put on a little bit ago that you guys saw. And, uh, and we'll be back, stay tuned. See how fun it is to do videos? All right, everybody, so the candy bites are ready. They've been in there for two hours and 45 minutes, about 225 to 250 degrees. And uh, we're gonna put them in these foil pans with the butter, brown sugar, and uh, a little bit of barbecue sauce. Go ahead and grab that door. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and grab these. Uh, we had a little problem with the wind today. My foil wouldn't stay. I plan on getting some magnets to hold them down. Even though this is stainless, it's kind of thin, but it does go through uh, to this metal here in the fenders. Man down. Always have a man down. Other man down. <clears throat> hey Mark. Let's try that. They're not they're not, I mean they're temper temperature wise they're done, but I can eat them like that. Usually they come apart. So tender. This is why I use aluminum foil. So let's go ahead and, uh, hey babe, can you hold this for a second? Now I know you guys seen this in many of my videos, but it never gets old, right? Can't beat candy bites. You can go ahead and shut that door. Thank you, sir. We needed gloves and my wife went to the store to get me some and she got me the largest, which did not fit my hands very well, but it's all she could get. So that's what we're gonna deal with. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add the honey. brown sugar this is light brown sugar 
I've used dark brown sugar. It's all good. Doesn't matter. Set that. Oh, wait, no, we gotta get the foil there later. I'm gonna add one stick of butter. Non-salted. All right, this is enough foil so we can cover this pan. Yeah, that's the wind there for you. And flip it upside down, however which way you can. <laughs> and we're gonna do a double layer. Perfect. All we gotta do is put this back in the smoker for about an hour. Then I'm gonna drain those juices into a fat separator. If you guys see my videos, I'll post some links above. You guys can check them out. All right, grab that door for me, please. Thank you, sir. And that's that. So uh, we'll be back. We're gonna get these other ones done and we'll see you shortly. All right. Yeah, we lost the audio on that last clip. I forgot to turn the microphone on. But anyway, Mark. That happened. Oh, yeah. Mark wanted to do the honors of uh, setting up the last pan. Does it exactly how I do it. Yeah, that's all part of it. Good go. Perfect. Oh, you're all good. Okay. Very good. Perfect. And then, uh, yeah, one pat of butter or one uh, stick of butter, and you're good. And that's the last one, correct? Yeah. Okay. The last one. Very good. I'm not going to add the barbecue sauce until later. For all you guys wondering, this is good old fashioned sweet baby race. Some of you like it, some of you don't. But what we're gonna do is uh, add this to it in about an hour and then uncovered and let it glaze. Be some good stuff. There you go. Thank you. 
Okay. Yep. Oh man, what is it? What, what's today's date? November 7th and it's, it feels like it's 75, 80 degrees out here in the sun. Gorgeous day today. Let me get out your way. And we got my neighbor Mark over here. He's the one that placed an order on these candy bites. So see how this works out. Pull this out a little bit. Oops. All right. Hey guys, stay tuned. We'll be back. All right, everybody. So I went ahead and pulled this brisket. I had to cut it because I'm going to take the point here and turn it into burn ends. And as you guys can see, you got a nice render in there. Hopefully that sun's not washing it out. Got a nice thick smoke ring. And yes, that is very hot. Hopefully you guys can see that. Show you guys this side of it. All you can see is that rendering right there. I'm not going to squeeze it because I know some of you guys will yell at me for doing it. But as you can see, it's just dripping all over the place. And it does, it still has to rest. Ooh, that's hot. But I just wanted to show you guys a smoke ring. Gonna go ahead and make some burn ends out of this. man I'm going to go ahead and wrap this flat up and put it back in the smoker I'm sorry, I'm going to put it in the warmer, in the Cambro, and I can eat this just like this. Ooh, that's hot. All right, hopefully the camera could pick that in. <clears throat> on how juicy that is. You can see that bark. I think you guys can see it. Hopefully the sun's not washing it out. And all you want to do is grab your pan. Just load them in there. I like to keep the bark on its side to where you see the meat. Right, hey, Mr. Mark, can you uh, please wrap that in foil? Yes, sir. And then uh, let me switch you around here. Yeah, you could, uh, we'll take this here to set this aside for now. And I'll slide this down to you. Then I'm gonna switch out my gloves. Do you need more butter? Yeah. Got the butter? I need the butter.
Thanks, sir. I'm just gonna take some butter again, just throw it in the pan. You don't need that much. Okay, let me see the honey. Get some honey in here. What's that? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, that might have been about a half a cup of honey or so. All right. Now I'm going to get some brown sugar in here. Okay, now I'm just gonna put some barbecue sauce over the top of this, cover them up, put them back in the smoker for about, I don't know, I'd say about 25 minutes and those babies will be ready for the, the warmer. Just so you guys know, when I wrap this with foil, as it's in the warmer, I'm gonna shake the pan. That'll allow when the juices start melting, the butter melts and everything comes together. It's gonna be amazing. And yes, this one's for you, Mr. Danny, boss man Danny. This is yours. Foil? Yep. Hey, if you guys made it this far in the video, I really appreciate it. You gotta be real dedicated to barbecue to stay this long in the video. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe guys. We still got more to do, so just hang in there. Hey, how do you guys do your burn-ins? 